welcome to Spotlight on Bensonville. I'm Village President Frank Soto, and today uh, we have a special guest. We have the clerk of our court system here in DuPage County, which is Chris, Chris Kacharubas. How are you doing, Chris? Thank you, Frank. Welcome. Thank you. This is fabulous. Great. Thank you for having it's me. It's nice to have you here. You know, a lot of times on Spotlight in Bensonville, we focus in on our local businesses, different areas of manufacturing, and then we've had a, a lot of our uh, elected officials in the state level, and we've also had people here dealing with airport real, uh, issues on a federal level, but, you know, uh, it was time that I think the village looked at and said, you know, we're also part of DuPage County, and and you know people have interaction with the county on a regular basis so why not ask some county officials to come here so I really appreciate you being here today absolutely thank you for the invite um, you know you are very much part of DuPage County and uh, while you are at the northeast end of it and and surrounded and you have your issues with O'Hare Airport you're a part of that vitality of DuPage County and and we know we, you and I have known each other for a number of years that Bensonville is part of the process of certainly of Addison Township and it's surrounding uh, sister towns and things like that and so um, we're we're pulling for you you know with all the issues that you may have here well and I appreciate it and and uh, a lot of people who watch our programs are seniors, but also, um, you know, just generally people in Bensonville, and and uh, sometimes they have interaction with the with the circuit court, both civil cases or, you know, criminal court courses or cases, or sometimes other matters. So, why don't you uh, give us a little breakdown of, for the people at home of uh, what their interaction may be or what the cl uh, clerk of the court does? The clerk has, you know, since 1839, the responsibilities, uh, which is when DuPage County was uh, developed and it came right out of uh, the, I want to say the southwest area or south uh, uh, western area of Cook County, and it hasn't changed very much, okay? Uh, as an attorney, you, you will understand that the record, the record of the court proceedings, RLP, is probably the, 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 the very foundation of our country. Um, John Adams said we are a country of laws. And one of the things that we have that is different from many other practices in the worldwide is in other uh, judicial uh, areas, and that is we have open court systems. You, myself, people watching the show, can go to the courthouse and look at any record of any court proceeding and see how it was, a tri the trial proceeded, and how the court found, made its findings in open court. So my responsibility in a long-winded way is to maintain the integrity of that record. I have every single court case since 1839 residing at the courthouse. All my predecessors have maintained those as going forward. And uh, just, a, as a, um, just a, as a side note, when we became, in March of 1839, we became an incorporated county, the first office that was sworn in was the clerk of the court. It was a, it was a Cook County judge, crossed the line, came over, swore him in, and then the clerk of the court swore in all the rest of it, the sheriff, the coroner, the treasurer, and the rest of the officers. Again, uh, and the other parts of my responsibilities is money, Always, there's always money involved, as you know, Frank, in, in the court system, and, and then evidence. And those three are my biggest responsibilities. I maintain those. I have, a, I have an evidence locker that I maintain. Some cases um, for as many as 30 years after the termination of sentence, I have to maintain that evidence. The reason why, and you, you see this all, all the time played out, where a case will come along and new technology will be developed, and that new technology comes along and says, um, this guy is innocent. So my job is to maintain that record securely, and when a court order comes, we bring it out, it's tested by the new taxology, and sometimes it's found that this man may have served 10, 20, 30 years in jail and shouldn't have. Yeah. male or female. The other part of it is the money, and we'll get into a little bit of that, because that money can go on for, we could talk 10 minutes about just about the money parts of it. But those are my yeah. major responsibilities. And, you know, for the people that, uh, that are at home, like uh, in a criminal case mainly, <coughs> uh, what will happen is the police officers uh, may, or collect uh, evidence and they seal it and they maintain the integrity of, of who has ever touched that evidence. Yes. And then uh, when the case comes to trial, the evidence is taken over to the clerk of the court, 
and then it's held and safe uh, safely so it isn't tampered with and that and then when the court uh, case goes to trial that evidence comes out it's it's dealt with uh, at the court and then once it's accepted as evidence then it has to be maintained uh, and preserved uh, for a period of time after that and this way uh, uh, what they call chain of custody that uh, the court system or the trier of fact could look back and see has anybody possibly tampered, changed, altered um, the integrity of that evidence over years and this maintains that. That chain of custody that you talked about is is incredibly important. I mean I take an oath in that chain of custody yeah. and people a lot of times say why why should the clerk be an elected position separate from the chief judge or the court system? You're, you're kind of a bureaucrat. That's right where you're talking about that chain of custody that's the most important part because the court doesn't have access to it okay the the lawyers don't have access to it. the sheriff doesn't have access to it the state's attorney so i'm this independent body that remains focused only on the record and that evidence and it main and, and keep it independent from anybody else so as as the process proceeds we can be assured that that evidence has not been tampered with and it remains independent of all the other bodies that are involved, in, even including the defense. And what's an interesting too is, uh, and at the village level, um, you know, we have, uh, you know, this entity, which is the village that we run and you, and you run your entity. And it doesn't mean that uh, even though it's government, we don't run it as efficiently as possible and look for ways to uh, maintain integrity, but also to run the operation efficiently, save money. Uh, what are some of the main uh, things that you've done at the clerk's office, and, and I've seen a number of them by going in there, uh, that you're most proud of uh, to improve efficiency and costs? I was the first clerk when I, when I was first elected. I was the first clerk in 70 years that didn't work in the office. So when I came to that office, Frank, I had a, a, a fresh set of eyes, I guess for lack of a better term. And I walked in and there was this long counter and a couple signs over the top of these counters. And, and, and if you didn't know as a person where to go, there was, there was, you could have stood there and stared. And the old counter used to have, uh, like when you go into Jewel and you want to buy a half a pound of ham and they had the red sticker, you know, you pulled it off and you mm -hmm. stood there and waited till somebody called your number. Well, we did away with all of that. We, we put in, we expanded the office, we got everybody brought together because it was on two or three different floors. We brought everybody under one roof, so to say, so to speak, and then we put in what I call uh, the Walmart greeter. And uh, they laugh at it, but that's my term. And so when a person who is not a legal person, just a civilian, walks in, they have a human person to talk to and say, I, I, I got this ticket, where do I pay for it? Or, can I get my my uh, my driver's license back? I lost it because of the speeding ticket or whatever. They can walk up to that person and get direction. And so, and then we have 14 counters uh, on one side and left side. We have the uh, criminal traffic side, and on the right side we have the as you know we have the civil side. And so, if your matter pertains to one of the other you're directed with a ticket and then uh, there's a flashing light there and you're sent to that person and then in confidentiality which there's enough space between them that you can talk to those people and so the civilian the person the newbie whatever the non-legal person can go up and have a conversation with somebody who can give you information about what to proceed and so i think that's my biggest it, for me you know coming from the outside in other accomplishments is the technology we have for the legal side of it we have taken what used to be a very um, arduous task in getting there before 4 30 if you remember those days we had to run in and make sure that you had to file something by 4 29 otherwise it was not going to be filed timely fashion well we've changed that we've made it electronic you can sit from the comfort of your office or from your home file that document all the way up to 11 59 of the day and still considered under the Supreme Court rules still considered as being a, um, a, a, a filing on time um, other things you can go online you can look up you can pay your uh, speeding ticket from the comfort of your home you can go online and pay that ticket you know so that we've changed the philosophy we changed the culture uh, making it less difficult to be participate in the legal system well it certainly um, shows in, in how nicely run uh, DuPage County's uh, clerk system is 
you know, being an attorney, I've gone to Rolling Meadows, Markham, a number of these other circuit courts, and you know, <clears throat> it is difficult to navigate as an attorney. I couldn't imagine how much time and energy people waste trying to navigate those uh, the court systems. But you know, we're going to take a couple minutes out for a commercial break. We'll talk more about this, and we'll be right back. Aquatic Center is conveniently located in the Redmond Recreational Complex in Bensonville. The Water's Edge is home of Fenton High School and Wahoo swim teams, featuring an indoor eight-lane lap pool and diving well. The Aquatic Center is available for private functions and parties. Learn to swim, stay in shape, or enjoy recreational swimming year-round at the Water's Edge Aquatic Center. The Bensonville Community Library, serving a community of readers. Whether you're old or young, a lover of words, music, or computers, the library has something for you. Check out our new Kindles, toddler jams, story and movie nights, or a variety of other activities offered. For more information, call us at 630-766-4642, or check out our schedule on the web at benlib.org. The Bensonville Community Library, celebrating 50 years of library service. Staying connected is important, and at the Village of Bensonville, it has never been easier to keep up to date with what's happening in our community. On your phone, PDA, PC, laptop, or tablet, the Village of Bensonville website offers easy integration, so you'll stay connected at home, in the office, or on the road. To follow us on Facebook, simply go to the Bensonville homepage and click on the Facebook icon in the lower left-hand corner. This will take you to the Bensonville Facebook fan page. Once there, click the like button to add us to your newsfeed and receive regular updates from around town. To follow us on Twitter, simply go to the Bensonville homepage and click on the Twitter icon in the lower left-hand corner. This will take you to the Bensonville Twitter page. Once there, click the follow button to add us to your Twitter feed and receive regular community updates. To receive email and cell phone notifications, click on the Notify Me button. This will take you to the Notify Me dashboard. Once there, simply add your email address and or cell phone number at the top of the page and then select which service you would like to receive updates from. The most common update section is in the News Flash Bensonville News. Click on the envelope icon for email alerts and on the phone icon for phone alerts. You can choose one, the other, or both. To watch our public access cable show or board meetings, simply click on the Bensonville Web TV button on the lower left sidebar menu of the homepage. This will take you to our streaming center where you can play current and past Bensonville cable TV shows and board meetings. To pay your Bensonville utility bill online, just click the online payments button and then follow the instructions provided on our secure payment site. If you have any problem, concern, or question to tell the village, then click on the Bensonville Action Hotline button. This will take you to the Action Line dashboard, where you can explain your issue and receive a response within 48 hours once you have clicked the Submit button at the bottom of the page. 
staying connected is important. And at the Village of Bensonville, it has never been easier to keep up to date with what's happening in our community. On your phone, PDA, PC, laptop, or tablet, the Village of Bensonville website offers easy integration, so you'll stay connected wherever you are. Welcome back to Spotlight on Bensonville. I'm Village President Frank Soto, and I'm here with our special guest, uh, Chris Kacharubis, who is the Clerk of the Court in DuPage County. Um, you know, last time, uh, or right before commercial, we had kind of had talked about some of the improvements for customer service that occurred, uh, you know, in DuPage County, which is, to me, far superior than what I've seen at any other courthouse that I've ever been to. So. Um, improving the quality of uh, the services you provide, but not improving or increasing the costs associated with those services and, and really being true to a uh, budget. Now the village, for example, on a, our, we're about 11 or 12 percent of the tax bill, uh, <clears throat> and yet we provide tremendous amount of services, you know, from water to sewer to street plowing. Um, you know, schools, in, at least in this area, are somewhere around 82 percent of the budget. Um, and every part, you know, part of the budget, it goes to a different level of service. Um, so, you know, we want to uh, do what we've been trying to do here is run with a zero property tax increase. Uh, every year, Bensonville has raised about one and a quarter percent, where they could actually levy up to three to four percent. Mm -hmm. We do about one and a quarter, mm -hmm. which is really more of a cost of living just to keep us flatlined. This year, we're doing zero, just like Chairman wow. Cronin. We're doing yes. a zero for the first exactly. time. Um, I know at your level, you've been doing very similar things and, and been doing it for a long time. And again, you know, it, it's when you run a large operation, you know, you have the, the kind of the fun stuff, the ribbon cutting for a mayor and things like that, but there are the serious things that affect most people. And property taxes affect all residents that live within the confines of uh, uh, Village of Bensonville or in DuPage County. So I have a huge I have a huge responsibility in that. So I balance the court system as well as look at my bottom line, and that's the budget that's given to me every year. Now, just for the purposes of record, I started in 2004. This is my 12th year, my 12th budget. Our first budget was eight million one hundred thousand dollars. This year, my budget is eight million two hundred thousand. In 12 years, we've gone up $100,000. Now, you have to balance that. Obviously, you have to shift and move and things like that because I have huge responsibilities. I have a almost $300,000 um, line item just for postage. And, and my responsibility is to notify people uh, in the court system when their data court, uh, when their time is in the court. And so I can't just say, well, we're gonna have to wipe that, uh, that, that line item out because my responsibility, part of my responsibility is to notify people that of their date and time of court and th that they can face their accuser. I mean, that's just one of the principles of our legal system. So we have to move around. We have to play accountant. We have to play fiscally responsible people. And so in those years, we've reduced our headcount by 16%. So. And, and, and most of it has been by not rehiring those positions. Uh, you know, there hasn't been firings and lays off, things like that. There's been, most of it has been by, by taking this position and said, okay, when that person retires, we're not gonna fill that job. And we're gonna divvy up the responsibilities of that position, but we're gonna ins insert technology. And we've been very cost effective, co efficient in, in the technology part of it. And so reducing by 16%, but the other thing is other culture changes is mandatory e-filing. Another thing that you, you're aware of mandatory e-filing. The Supreme Court put a line in the sand for 2018 and said all courtrooms will be in the state of Illinois will be mandatory e-filing. We started e-filing January 1st of this year. We're two years ahead of the court. But what does that do? What does that mean to the people watching this program? Well, that means less parking, less people, less paper, less labor involved in the process. So when you come to the court system, there is less people there because the, uh, the system is allowing for electronic filing. And, and so when you have less paper, there's less cost involved. So we're bringing it down slowly. And in it. But we really, you know, and then I have a record 
Every year, we have returned back to the county about 2% of that budget. We don't spend out. You know, I, you know how we have, we used to, the old school was, okay, if you don't spend this money at the end of the budget, you're not gonna get it back. Well, we don't do that. We turn back 2% or more every single year. And that is because we look at what we can do in cost efficiencies and savings to the taxpayer who keeps the levy part because I have, I am, I'm the second largest court system in the state of Illinois. So we would make a huge impact if we started keeping rising our values. So we keep it tapped down, but we also are efficient and effective in terms of the courtroom. So for the people at home that don't know Chris, uh, I know you live in the area, you're married, you have, a no, uh, was it three kids? I do have three kids, thank you. Yeah, unless I'm not aware. But the, um, I, I've, I've lived in Elmhurst for 16 years. Prior to this, I was the Addison Township Assessor. You and I knew each other ba way back in those days, too. Um, and I, as Assessor, um, I spent a number of years there, and then I ran for uh, countywide office, clerk of the circuit court. And then my beautiful wife, Laura, has a, is a, is a um, uh, small business owner in Elmhurst also. And my three kids are, one just graduated from the University of Illinois, and one is at Western Illinois, and one is at the University of Iowa. So I'm very proud of my kids who have gone on to a secondary education, and, uh, uh, but none of them want to be in politics. So I guess that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> none of mine want to be lawyers, yeah. so that's that's probably a good sign. So, and we were just talking as I, my, my oldest son just graduated uh, as well. He was University of Dayton. I still have uh, a daughter at University of Dayton. I have a son who just went, or is a freshman at University of Dayton. Although he was looking at Iowa, and then my my uh, I have a daughter at uh, ISU. All great schools. I went to yeah. Eastern Illinois yeah. University. Yeah. Which the only thing we have acclaimed the fame for was Tony Romo. Yes. I believe in Burl Ives. Well, uh, don't you have Sean Payton? Didn't Sean Payton go that's to university? Right. Sean, yes, you Sean have a coach Payton was a coach at the there. University of uh, Notre Dame. Uh, I mean, uh, New Orleans yeah. coach, right? That's yes. right. And John Malkovich. John Malkovich, there you are. Yes. And, uh, and Governor Egger. Uh, Wow. All right. Now, that's see, right. Your, your bench is pretty long there yeah, uh, in yeah. terms of uh, notoriety. Dating back Burl Ives' age. <laughs> If well, he there sings had, a famous song. Yeah. Red, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Everybody knows that yeah. song. There you go. So, um, so it's nice to see. Uh, Western's a beautiful campus. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a wonderful campus, and my son loves it. Uh, Iowa. I just spent the weekend with my daughter in Iowa, and it was um, Dad's Day at her sorority. So it was wonderful. I, I just got to spend about a 24 hour period with her, concentrated period, and, and we had a great time. We went, ended up going to an apple orchard afterwards. And so yeah, that's we, nice. Yeah, it's it a was. beautiful country. It was, I mean, oh my God. It's a nice drive through oh. Illinois going there. Um, it's, it's, I think it's a, that's a three and a half hour, but yeah, about how far is it to Western? <laughs> Four hours. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of, it gets down to two lanes and kind of, goes through that and uh, yeah that's 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 a long ride from Macomb. And, and there are some parents whose kids are at Southern and that's really a drive. I did that my my son started at Southern so I my my one that graduated from Illinois yeah that's a long ride. Now I, I did want to talk to you about a couple other things and uh, one of the things I I had a photograph here let me find it here. Oh, sure. I uh, I saw your picture in the paper. Oh well thank you. Well, there you are. Your hair was much darker in that picture <laughs> right here. Yes, it was. It was, I think it's a prom picture. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know. <laughs> so what, what was it? Um, you were you received an endorsement or what was I that? Did, I did. So uh, it wasn't anything bad? No, it was this, very good. This time for a politician being in a paper is actually good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it was. And I thank you for bringing it up. I, 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 the Chicago Tribune had put me into the newspaper and uh, they endorsed me for uh, office and I, I was very, but the opening line was, uh, we were impressed. And so anytime I can impress the flagship newspaper of the Chicagoland area, I guess that's a good thing. It certainly is. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. For, thank you. For and uh, thank you for visiting us uh, with us today on Spotlight and Benson. Uh, hopefully we'll see you soon at our next show.